Hello and good afternoon, Xbox Nation. Welcome to this week's new episode of the Xbox Factor Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Boomstick XL. Folks, we have an outstanding uh, show for you today. Lots of fun, big, positive topics to talk about. Um, obviously, you're going to get some brand new, just recorded gameplay from Dragon's Dogma 2, my game of the year. My God, you're going to see me get my ass kicked uh, a couple of times uh, like you did with that dragon. Th- you're going to see something happen here. Keep watching, folks. Wait for it. It's just crazy. Uh, there's been some things happening in this game where just when you think you have the game by its by its sack, it kicks you in yours. <laughs> Steel Rain, what's going on, my brother? Great show. Actually, one of the longest shows of the year so far for you and Pong. How are you feeling, my friend? Yeah, at this point, I mean, uh, it's just it's just come to be expected. We just get in there, we're just having such good conversation, touching on so many things, getting the chat involved. I mean, with Living Split Screen being the non-console centric platform, <laughs> as I've been shouting out to my brother Mav here recently, who's just been <laughs> having me say it wrong and just completely ignoring it. Um, <laughs> but being a non-console centric platform, it just makes it always so great to have uh, just that RTS perspective on the entire industry, pulling yourself out, looking at the dark crevices of that map pulling those resources together so we can build up that foundation so um greatly appreciate you tuning in too boom um but yeah we're here on xbox factor podcast and i think we got some good topics to get into along with uh man why aren't these gamers buying some games boom i guess we'll find out we're gonna find out because you know you know we've heard this conversation of failed experiment well we'll know shortly enough we're gonna get into it uh and uh obviously you know, we're going to have a conversation of uh, what else is uh, is is going on in Xbox Nation. Uh, there's a lot to get into. Uh, but Mav, hey, listen, brother, it's been a minute that we've had you on here. Last night, obviously, you could not have, you, you know, you couldn't do your regular show. So, of course, I reached out to you, seeing if you got your internet back. And well, here you are. So you did. How you feeling? Uh, a lot better today now that I can actually use the internet. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's brutal in this day and age when. You don't have access to internet. You don't realize how much you rely on it, you know, but uh, we're back up and running today, boom. So I saw the invite this morning. Uh, happy to hop on with you, my brother, Steel Rain. And uh, we got a lot to catch up on. Uh, yesterday was April Fool's Day also. So I didn't know what gaming news was real and not anyway. So it was, I guess it's good that we uh, missed yesterday's show. But we got some interesting topics to talk about. So looking forward to it, man. Yeah, I mean, listen, you know, obviously you, uh, you know, you, you, there were some things out there that were really cool that I so wish. Like, for instance, uh, who was it that did this? Someone did the Dreamcast Mini. Yeah. And, and I was like, I my heart wants to believe this so bad, but I know that if I do, it's going to break by the end of the day. And of course it was fake. And I'm like, oh, my God, the gaming gods are laughing at me. Uh, and the other one that they had, I think Clobriel did this one, and Clobriel did a really good one. Uh, he did a brutal legend remake. Yeah. And I was like, holy. And I had to stop myself. And I'm like, God damn it, the April Fools. And then, of course, yep. uh, Jez Corton was like, man, that's mean. And he went, no, it's actually brutal. And I'm like, you sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you, and people had fun with it. Um, I saw a lot of really cool ones. Those are the two that jump off the pla- uh, you know, d- jump off the page for me. Um, but listen, as we wait for Infinite Umber to get here, uh, who's only going to stay for a little bit because he's obviously uh, coming. He actually worked late, um, and uh, he was, uh, you know, he's, you know, he he works midnight, so he's exhausted. But uh, guys, I, I want to jump into this True Trophies uh, report. Uh, this was this was written uh, by uh, Lee Brandy, published March 29th. Obviously, this was uh, you know last week. Um, today's obviously April 2nd, um, and uh, the lead title here is Xbox games on PlayStation 5 have been having a rough time so far. PlayStation users PlayStation users have shown little interest in Microsoft's Xbox games on PlayStation 5. So far, according to our Xbox Games player count for March 2024. Now, the article goes on to say, Steel Rain, with these, uh, with the release of Hi-Fi Rush trophies on PlayStation 5, 
that means we now have seen half of what of the promised four games that were going to be coming to PlayStation 5 in 2024. So Mm -hmm. how is it going for Microsoft so far? Well, seemingly not great, according to the article, at least if our Xbox game uh, games player count for March 2024 is any indication. That said, there's a chance that this will turn around with April 2024 release of Sea of Thieves. Um, Now, you know, I was looking at some of the numbers, and of course I did read through the article, Pentiment sold absolutely abysmal on both mm-hmm. uh, on, on PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4. Um, and uh, according to... Let's see here. Okay, so it wasn't PlayStation 4. We So, okay, it says here, Hi-Fi Rush and Pentiment see week debut on PlayStation 5 using exclusive data from over 3.1 million active PlayStation user accounts, courtesy of Game Insights. We can see just how many PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 players have booted up the first two former Xbox exclusives to come to PlayStation 5, Pentiment and Hi-Fi Rush. Now, uh, obviously, Pentiment, certainly uh, not a game for me. I've talked about it. I tried it. I did play it for about maybe an hour. Uh, it's 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 beautiful. It's beautiful to look at. It's very artsy. Uh, I'm glad that it exists, but it's not a game that I would play, uh, which is fine. Not every game is for every gamer. Mm -hmm. The one that is striking to me, the one that is a bit of a conundrum is Hi-Fi Rush. Because um, if I remember when it first released as an Xbox exclusive, there were many conversations within Sony's own camp that said that this very much is indicative of what a quote-unquote PlayStation game looks like. And people were in their feelings Mm. that it was exclusive. And obviously, well, it's now you can buy it. And the regular edition. See, this Mm -hmm. is this is where I think this might be. We start we start floating on the realm of failed experiment. Um, When it was first announced, it was on sale for twenty six bucks for the regular standard edition. And it's still didn't make it out of the top 120 games on PlayStation. Um let's uh let's talk about it, Steel. Um oh man, I mean goodness. I mean what can you I mean what can you say? I mean when it comes down to uh, what we've been seeing what we've been seeing from PlayStation, um at least to me it seems like the games have to be of a certain type. Right. Yes. Um, Rise of the Ronin seems to be doing really well over there right now. So maybe that was uh, another part of it. Again, you have to look at the totality of the scene. Um, and to be quite frank, if there was a choice that I had to make between Rise of the Ronin or Hi Fi Rush, I'm choosing The Last Ronin. It just is the more appealing game overall. Um, especially as somebody who I liked, I enjoyed Wo Long, I enjoyed Team Ninja games overall. So there is some of that going into it. Uh, Hi Fi Rush being a rhythm game and people knowing that, that's a turn off for a lot of people. And just because it's a action based game um, and it does have depth and everything else, uh, a lot of people aren't going to take the time to look into it because of the kitty nature of it, um, unfortunately. Um, Again, I mean, we we had good engagement on the Xbox side of things as far as Hi-Fi Rush goes. I don't know how well the game sold. Again, we had rumors and things that were uh, being said at the time from people like Jeff Grubb uh, that were saying that, hey, the game probably didn't sell the greatest. But again, knowing that Xbox is more so concerned about in, uh, engagement more than anything else. Uh, I guess it's only up to them to decide whether that's OK or not. Um, it not it going to PlayStation and not doing well. I do think it, this bodes well for the test bed that you guys were kind of worried about, about, oh, Xbox games going to other platforms, this, that, another thing. Oh, what's the point? Blah, blah, blah. I think it works in the favor of that argument because what this is, what this would be proving to Microsoft and to Xbox and to Phil and the conversations that he's having is like, hey, it's not even worth us doing that part of the strategy. Yes, yes maybe we find some games that are okay, but let's just folk let's just keep things inside of our own ecosystem um whether in all the different ways that we're going to end up giving people to play if these players aren't going to engage when we try to cut deals and, and unfortunately what this is going to do is 
it's also going to give PlayStation a leg up in some ways and saying that, hey, Xbox, your games come over here and they don't do anything. So why would we want to do deals with you? Why would we cut such and such and such? Now, again, they have to kind of come to the table anyway because of Call of Duty. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and I, I highly doubt that Hi-Fi Rush going over to PlayStation has anything to do with any other back-ended deals. But it, there's a, there's a multifaceted way that you that this could definitely be interpreted. Um, for me, I think it establishes kind of the thing that I've come to realize about that ecosystem. Unless it's a certain type of game, it looks a certain type of way. They're not going to jump. They're not going to play it, or people are not going to invest. I mean, come to find out, there's only what was it two million concurrent active players on the on the PlayStation Network, or uh, well, whatever the case may be. Yeah. That are constantly being in uh constantly investing uh it, it's just you're seeing some of these statistics statistics and stuff come out and it's like wh what is what is the truth in all of this and how do we move things forward why i mean why aren't people or is this again pentiment i can completely understand i can i can look anybody in the face and tell them mm, i wouldn't recommend yeah. pentiment to you i i that's not a game that's going to sell copies it's not going to do anything Hi-Fi Rush, it's it's a little bit of a it, that's definitely a different story, and I enjoyed yeah. what what I got out of it. But even myself, I only played half the game. the The rest of the game didn't keep me comparatively to other games that were coming out, and that is also the reality that we're walking into. Where I'm kind of glad that Hi-Fi Rush was a passion project to come as 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 uh, we've come to find out more so than anything because I. I if it was just strictly based on sales, I, I don't think that the game would have been overall performed very, it would have been performing really well. So uh, hopefully more people get eyes on it. Uh, I haven't seen much marketing outside of, but again, maybe it's just me. I'm not living on Twitter, uh, but I am in multiple and multiple different ecosystems, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, um, all the different types of gaming groups. And I haven't really seen anybody talking about it um, except a few handfuls here and there, but, I, I, yeah, man, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what it is. It, I, the gamers, and again, it goes back to my point about if it were me when I was younger and I saw a game like that come out, and I was a fan of Devil May Cry, I would have been like, oh man, yeah, that's that. I'm, maybe I jump into that. But nowadays, I just the audience that they're trying to reach out to, like we all said, oh, but it's cute, and they got all these uh, these characters that stand out. My my kids don't care. Yeah, not, they don't stand. They don't stand out enough. Uh, they've seen shy plenty. The cat is cute or whatever, and they they might get a toy every now and then. But other than that, I, and, and maybe that's part of the reality as well. It, we're just in a really strange time in gaming, so it's hard to say. Oh, well, the game is bad. Well, I know the game is isn't bad. It's a very high quality game. One of the most polished games that we've gotten <laughs> over the last decade, I would say, um, from just from the very beginning, very well put together, great music. Um, you can tell there's a lot of love poured into it, but the consumers aren't aren't engaging with it. So I I, I, I don't know, man. Uh, that's that's kind of how I'm I'm uh, I'm looking at it and approaching it right now. Yeah, it's it, it's a uh, well, great points all around. Uh, the numbers don't lie. Um, and, uh, you know, there is something to be said about, you know, there, uh, uh oh, we lost, we lost, uh, we lost steel for a hot second. We'll get, we'll get it back here momentarily. I don't know what happened. Uh, Mav, let's, let's bring you in on the conversation. Now, once again, folks, we are using an article that was, pr uh, uh, put out there by true, true trophies.com. Uh, let me go back to the writer. Cause obviously we got to give credit where credit is due. Lee Brandy. Uh, wrote this story, Mav. So I have some more interesting and pointed um, uh, numbers to go with. Oh, Steel Rain is back. Let's get him on in here. Uh -oh. There you go, Steel. <laughs> <laughs> Not oh, a sweat. Wow. So, so, Mav, check this out. According to the article, uh, Tango Gameworks Hi-Fi Rush fared way better than Pentiment, although not remarkably better. Uh, in its PlayStation 5 launch week, data from week ending Sunday, March 24, 2024, uh, Hi-Fi Rush made it to the top one, uh, the, the actual uh, 124 spot on our top 200 PlayStation chart. Uh, to put that into perspective, there was a 173.24% oh, difference 
between Hi-Fi Rush's debut on PlayStation 5 player count and Dragon Dogma's 2 debut PS5 player count. Both games launched the same week, but Dragon's Dogma 2 hit the number 9 spot, while Hi-Fi Rush didn't even graze the top 100. At the number 24 spot, which is obviously a a heck of a lot uh, closer than what you know hi-fi rush was landed the playstation 5 exclusive rise of the ronin and it beat the hi-fi rush the debut player count by get this 144.33 percent um and the article continues and closes out by saying the comp- uh, comparatively uh the the low performance is a surprise to me given not only how solid hi-fi rush is as a game but also the fact that I saw Hi-Fi Rush slapped all over the PlayStation Store on its PS5 during uh, on its debut week, uh, according to the article. So, Mav, again, it's just two store. It's just two games, right? Obviously, we don't. We we're still we're still waiting on uh, to see what uh, pe- um, what uh, Sea of Thieves and Grounded do on PlayStation. Um, those are obviously multiplayer. Um, I don't know what the market is for multiplayer on PlayStation. They like, like I think the it, Steel said it perfectly. There's they those players. If it's not Call of Duty, if it's not Apex, if it's not Fortnite, um, and it's not a you know quote unquote movie like game, it doesn't really sell well, especially multiplayer. My question to you is: Okay, so we have two already failed experiments. In my opinion, what happens if Sea of Thieves? What happens if this if this happens to Sea of Thieves and Grounded? Yeah, so I think those are going to be the more That's interesting ones. Yeah. yeah, I like the Sea of Thieves and Grounded are those kind of games of service, like um, multiplayer focused games, and they're going to thrive off of the player count more so than a game like a Hi Fi Rush or. Uh, pentiment would thrive based on sales right so it's hard to say 100 percent like how these games are doing just based on those metrics however i agree it doesn't look good whatsoever and but, but i think that we need like a little bit more information than just the early concurrent account uh, uh based on that metric right there but uh microsoft knows and the thing that would concern me over hi-fi rush and uh well it doesn't really concern me for pentiment because i don't really care but for hi-fi rush would be well the reason they said they wanted to put some of those games on playstation was to kind of justify the investment for those kinds of games uh if they once they've reached their uh kind of max cells that they think they're going to get uh, on xbox you know put it somewhere else you know, it sold pretty okay on Steam. It sold uh, okay on Xbox, right? But it was also in Game Pass for uh, for for those platforms for PC and X and Xbox. But PlayStation, you know, you're only gonna you don't, you can only buy it there, right? Right. So it's kind of a way. Okay, let's see how it does over there and see how many sales it gets. It if it doesn't sell that well, the only concern I would have is like, does that shy them away from doing? more sequels in in a game like that you know uh like do they not green light as many passion projects right um because that's the main reason why they're doing it for those specific games and that's kind of what phil alluded to in that interview so for those reasons i i personally hope that people on playstation uh, find these games and give them a chance because they're, they're damn good. And, you know, the, the catch side is like, well, if they don't do well, Xbox will learn their lesson and they'll stop doing it. You know, they'll stop putting their games on PlayStation, right? Uh, but I don't I don't know. I don't know if that's what, as Xbox gamers, we should hope for when it comes to, like, maybe the, them justifying the projects they're making or investing in or green lighting and all that kind of stuff. Like, Anytime a game goes somewhere and doesn't succeed, I think it's not necessarily good for the developers and it's not necessarily good for the franchise, right? So uh, people out there, Hi-Fi Rush is um, an amazing game 
And if you haven't tried it, it's yep. only like 30 bucks, right? Mm -hmm. And it's one of the best bangs for the buck you've gotten in the last couple of years as far as quality of gameplay versus price and all those kind of things. So uh, the music's fun. Uh, the game's got good reviews, all that kind of stuff. I recommend giving it a shot. I, it steals right. Pentiment is more of that super niche thing, really, for people that really like um, a specific kinds of storytelling games and stuff like that. So, but if you do like that kind of thing, Pentiment can be completely up your alley as well. But I think Xbox always expected it to have like a just very, very kind of niche thing, right? Um, but Sea of Thieves and Grounded, I think, have the best chance over there because it's kind of filling a hole for PlayStation that yeah. they can't fill themselves. Yep. You know, they, they, they suck at making multiplayer games. Let's just be honest, right? Yes, and they suck at supporting their multiplayer games as well. <laughs> and they and to think of how much they suck at, going, at making multiplayer games, they go to Square Enix to make them a multiplayer game out of all the companies like, hey, Square is going to be the person that we choose to make a PlayStation exclusive multiplayer. Yeah, that's not the company I would go with to make a big, giant, successful multiplayer franchise. And that's you know, Foam Stars is already in the thing in the past. Yep. But Sea of Thieves is established, right? Grounded is uh, established and, and still growing. So I think these are games and franchises that have a chance to actually do something over there just because they are bigger IPs now. They are bigger franchises now that the name is out there. And I feel like um, those games are going to be supported for still years to come, Yep. Um, regardless of how successful they are on PlayStation, right? So I think they have a, a chance because they're going to stay there. And even if they don't you know, set the world on fire like day one on PlayStation, I think because of the quality of the games there, the the, the um, how fun they are, how much content they have in them now, it's just going to continue to grow for those on PlayStation over time. Just like they did on Xbox. You know, these are, uh, Sea of Thieves didn't start off setting the world on fire on Xbox either. Every month it grew and got bigger and better mm -hmm. and, and the, the audience continued to come, right? Uh, Grounded, same thing. It started in, in preview and people were like, oh yeah, check this game out. But hey, the players kept coming and they kept showing up and they kept growing. I think those games have a chance to do the same thing on PlayStation because Microsoft's the one making it, not Sony or or a company like Square Enix. So, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I think uh, I want people to play Hi-Fi Rush. Give it a shot. They put it. They put it on PlayStation. So if you're on PlayStation, play some games. Yeah, I, I think the other thing, too, because I do want to offer a correction, the monthly active users on the PlayStation base, uh, actually, surprisingly, on um, PlayStation and Xbox are about the same. They both have about 120 million uh, active users between them, with PlayStation actually having about 3 million more, uh, apparently from uh, numbers I can pull from 2023 uh, with the play. The game only came out on PlayStation five and series consoles. So again, you're limiting the pool down to let's just be generous with the series consoles. Uh, what about 70 million next gen consoles? If you want to do it, do it that way. Um, with with PlayStation leading that charge with 50 million with Pete with 50 million people having a PlayStation five and us also finding out the numbers is prob probably only what 30 million of those that are actually active. Um, Maybe that also has an effect on it, and again, is going to play into this. This is not one of those games that people are looking for with all, all the different games that are out. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing, but I, I did want to offer that correction because there is engagement on the platform, but there's not you're not seeing that engagement on the next gen hardware. So there could also be one of those things where that might have been the problem on xbox as well but again it's we can't have that conversation because the conversation now for xbox is engagement and they said that they got the engagement that they wanted but to the point that um people were making in the chat is that they're also considering the physical sale of the game because we know they did some of those um that could be another re that could be another way that say hey we're since we're making a physical version uh go ahead and release to this platform as well let's see how what we can do for it let's see what the engagement truly is and they kind of go from there um so i mean I, i'd imagine that that would have to play into it but again i mean i was uh, i also looked up to see what people were even playing on uh the playstation hardware and it was i mean the top 10 i mean you see call of duty uh 2k um yeah you know, and, th and things of that nature, Fortnite, Roblox. Now, since Roblox is now available on that platform, um, 
in the you you know you don't see uh, games of this nature. So I, it's just unfortunately when it be, when it comes to games that that look like indie games, and I, I again I don't feel this way. This is just how the fan base makes it come across, especially yeah. on the PlayStation side. If it is not a movie like game or a multi platform game that I'm playing with my friends it's it it just doesn't seem like it's worth it to them and even that returnal is another one of those that again if they're not engaging with that it's hard for me to imagine them ga- engaging with a hi-fi rush i mean again yes two different games but it's like well that well, returnal is more of like what you guys look for you didn't engage with that either but is it because it's this new indie thing and oh it's a brand new game is new games just having a problem over there? Well, I, I, mean, I think so. Still, I mean, <laughs> but I mean, you really look at it even oh, with those, those weird... kinds of games, right? <laughs> yeah, they they don't sell as much as you would think they they would, mm-hmm. uh, like comparatively to the budget and the marketing and time it takes to make them and all that stuff, right? It's like right. they they take years and years to make a game, right? And then it's like, all right, we're gonna put all this marketing and all this stuff behind it. Then it's like, uh, you know, it sold a few million copies. You see these multiplats come out and just do like three times, four times, five times the amount of numbers that they do. Mm-hmm. I, I would think that for the first party, I, that would be a little bit of an issue. Right. And that, and that's probably why they're struggling so much right now. I mean, but they also don't have much of a roadmap coming out either. So it's when true. Those games do come out though. You would think people would really, really, really want them. But if you look yes. at it comparatively to like Nintendo, right? Like N- Nintendo games, it could be even like, not even the biggest one will just do five times the numbers of like a PlayStation exclusive, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it, I just think that ultimately like place PlayStation is just more of a casual console for like, and I think all those extra sales of consoles that they sell are for people that play call of duty, people that play Madden and yep. people that play FIFA and stuff like that. And it's just their de facto box that they choose. Cause they don't really care what console they own. They're just going to get the PlayStation they're just to play the new Call of Duty or to play the new Madden or to play the whatever because that's how they do it, right? And ultimately, that doesn't translate to games like Hi-Fi Rush or, or Intimate doing very well on a box like that whose player base is like that. And over time, you know, that's kind of shown to be true, you know? So, uh, but it, it is what it is. I think that if the games come out day and date, they have a little bit better chance to do well. But at the same time, like, I don't think it's necessarily the audience for PlayStation for some of these games. You know, what's interesting uh, now. I think I, I got to make sure I'm pre- heads with a lot of Z's says. Uh, and this is a, this. Is, I never thought of it like this. Pretty interesting theory. He says PlayStation fans are Apple. Xbox fans are Android. That's my comparison. I, you know, um, that's not a that's not a bad comparison. That's kind of how I look at it, honestly. That's not a bad one at all. Um, point, because dude. Sony does have that same. Sony's had that mentality since <laughs> since the since the Walkman. Uh, our hardware is just is is better since car audio speakers, home speakers. It's oh, all our equipment, our our hardware is just better. That's the way that they have always come across, and that is very Apple like, although. Again, we've come to find out very different things, but it's just and but again, it is the JB's point that he makes in the chat. Android does sell it a lot, right? And Android is also the thing about Android. If <laughs> if Microsoft is able to do Android with Windows, except in the gaming space, that would be really unique because then you would have a way to bring the Windows phone back as well. A, that would enable you to increase that now. A, so see, now we're talking about creating more hardware, possibly if you're able to deliver this operating system or whatever you end up making for the future of gaming on multiple devices, whether that be surface laptops, game, gaming PCs out of the box, however you want it. It they're just, there's just too many. There's just too many options with that. Um, but I, I want to pose this question for you guys. Um, I had, and I, and I had it right there on the top of my head. Um, what, what, what was it? Oh, um, it's the it's the question that I, I kind of posed. I, I kind of posed earlier. If PlayStation's engagement, oh, um, if Xbox, if this, if these games go into PlayStation, is not getting the engagement that 
Xbox feels is necessary. What do you think? Do you think that that bodes well for some of the conversation that Boom has brought up? Some of the uh, maybe some for the uh, traditional console gamers that say, "Hey, okay, maybe our, we are going to end up keeping our games exclusively to our platform or our ecosystem because these players obviously don't want our games over there." Or is this just seen as a, "Hey, Microsoft's a big corporation that can kind of do whatever they want. If they want to put it over there, they do." And then they just leave it at that. You know, it, it's a, a fantastic question, to be quite honest with you. Very interesting. Um, you know what I think? I, again, it is a little early. I, I do agree with Mav 1000% here. Uh, it is a little early because these are two games, one of which I, I think is high caliber, no pun intended. And mm -hmm. the other one is, well, it's an indie. It's made by a couple of people. It was a passion project. It did okay. A lot mm -hmm. of people played it. It was highly praised by everyone that played it, that enjoyed it. I I, I just did not. It's not a game for me. It's fine. Mm -hmm. um, High Fry Rush, definitely a game for me. Um, and uh, we, we, I think we'll really see uh, what the the what the forecast for play Xbox games on PlayStation when we get the two bigger ones. Obviously, Sea of Thieves and grounded are going to be a real tell to okay. whether or not microsoft continues to spend money on development costs to bring games to playstation players if they're not going to buy them Mav, what do you think man a great question i think like ultimately yeah it would it would make an argument for everybody who said that yeah the games shouldn't go on to playstation right it, because they're not going to sell and stuff like mm -hmm. that it wasn't worth I guess I've heard that argument a lot. Um, the question, though, is like, what does what does Microsoft do about it? You know, because like at that point, do they change the strategy and start doing games day and date on PlayStation to see if that increases the sales? Like uh, it, that would be even crazier, and that would cause a like a horrible uh, outrage and stuff like That'd that. Be a PR also. nightmare for yeah. Oh yeah, God, yeah, a thousand percent. Yeah, that, that's like a reach, right? That's like something that you would not really ever necessarily fathom them doing uh, for those kind of games. So I don't necessarily think that's the move, but like, or they just pull back on it, or they try bigger games. So the, the, there's multiple scenarios here where they say, okay, we need to try it. We're, we're trying these different experiments, right? Um, if they all fail, yeah, then maybe they just say, okay, let's just not worry about that. We double back down on you know, making our, our box like super exclusive closed thing. But I just, I almost kind of think like we're at the point of no return with that, with them because of the ecosystem and how they've, how they've branched it out and how they continue to talk about it with uh, this like open-ended ecosystem, even with the rumors of the new hardware and everything going with that and potentially like more open uh, ecosystem stuff and, and then rumors of like steam and then, uh, epic game store and, and all those other kind of things like they're really everything that we're hearing is kind of like opening things up more making things more accessible for the users and giving people more options of places to play so closing in the box itself the xbox console itself even more so in the future seems like it's kind of like contrary to that vision for them even mm -hmm. though i i think that's what they sh should do if they want to sell consoles right but I just don't I don't know how much they care about that in competition with PlayStation. I think they care about selling Xboxes to Xbox gamers, right? People that like Xbox and play on Xbox. I don't think they're necessarily care about going after the PlayStation consumer anymore or the or or people like that. It's like they're just going after other people, other gamers, more like mass appeal things and stuff like that. So it's going to be interesting to see how they adjust, but I just, I could never predict, man. I, I, what I would assume the next step would be is if these games don't succeed is they just try, they try different ones. And if those don't, then they, then maybe they stop at that point or they just continue to do it to get people used to it. Or they move up the date on when they do it as opposed to waiting as long. So I, but I don't know, man. Um, they did say this was an experiment, right? Uh, when they talked about it, that they're trying this and they'll see where it goes. 
But yeah, it's it's going to be interesting because the industry is changing. And I think that in the next few years, we're all going to be looking at conversations like this and being like, oh, what were we even talking about? Because like we can't really ever predict what the heck these companies are doing, man. Uh, there, There's people at Microsoft who I think want different things, right? And we'll see what these sales on PlayStation does to make those decisions and those arguments between those different camps stronger. And then we'll know. I mean, great point all around, Mav. Uh, I think that we we that we knocked this out of the park. First of all, I want to welcome in nearly uh, 800 live viewers. We have, hey. Yeah, almost 600 people on, on, on YouTube. And we got almost nearly 200 people on X watching the show. That is freaking awesome. A big thank you to everyone that's here. Uh, Hargeet Chani in the chat. What's up, Hargeet? We got a big show tomorrow, brother. I'm going to send you all the information later on this evening. Lots of happenings with what the future of Xbox is doing. And we got some theories, uh, folks. I don't think people are ready for what Xbox is doing in 2026. It is going to logistically change the entire industry. I'm going to see, obviously, K. Asante it will be joining us. Hargeet will be joining us. But Everborn Saga, uh, obviously, who's, you know, he's a, he's a member of the panel. You know, real life has taken over. He's actually so excited that he is going to show up and talk about it. And I'm going to see if I can get OBM. He's another tech head as well. And we're going to have a nice big conversation about the future of Xbox. Folks, I'm here to tell you, you should be excited, not only for the games. And quite frankly, they are leading the charge with games they have so much in development it's crazy but the hardware man some of the stuff i'm hearing some of the stuff you know you listen to jez corden of of, of windows central you watch the xbox 2 podcast with randall thor there's a lot going on with xbox and i don't really think people are really looking too far down the road as to how they're going to logistically change the entire landscape of gaming and uh, listen, again, you know, I'm not going to tell you not to be a doom and gloomer. If that's how you roll, that's how you roll. You're still welcomed here, but I am all about positivity, and that's what we're going to push forward. First of all, let, let me welcome in. We got a super chat here from Looney Boy 221133. First of all, I don't think I've ever seen you in the <laughs> chat. Well, welcome, Looney Boy. For appreciate you being here. He drops, folks, a very generous 10 dollar super chat and says microsoft is data harvesting from playstation from from the playstation ps5 platform to strengthen their future plans also satya is not done with acquisitions and sony showed their hand in the ftc case with their bs argument chess move yeah i i would agree with you there i think that microsoft you know we've heard this before this terminology they are logistically playing 4d chess they, they really really are I think people are 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 really down scaling what they're up to. And I think ultimately, look, do I care if they make more billions? I honestly don't give a shit because it's not filling my coffers and it's not going to help me and Mrs. Boom buy a new home or, or a, our first home, I should say. Uh, that's not going to happen. I have stock. You see, you've seen it up here. It ain't much. I'm not making any money off it. The truth of the matter is, is I'm looking at this from a gamer and more importantly, a consumer. And the more that they put into Xbox Game Pass, the more acquisitions they make, the more uh, IP that they get control of. I know that ultimately it's going to work its way into my subscription service that I'm currently paying $16.99. And quite frankly, it's the best deal in gaming. Um, but I, I want to talk about this one now again. This may certainly not be the biggest topic of the show. One, for me, it's exciting because, obviously, I'm an Aliens and Predator fan. Um, there were there was a game a couple, a couple of years ago, uh, I think almost four years now, called Predator Hunting Grounds that was a PlayStation 4 and uh, PC exclusive. Uh, that was now, I mean, I played it. I enjoyed it. It's a multiplayer game. It did not do the greatest. Uh, it was published by Sony interactive entertainment. They did not make the game. Another studio made the game for them, but we learned, and thanks to uh, Wario 64 on of Twitter fame, 
He uh, goes on to say Predator Hunting Grounds is coming to Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5 in late 2024. Now, I have the press release here. Uh, this comes the way of Ilphonic announced, and that Ilphonic is the, is the developer of this game, uh, and they have a, a press release here. Uh, Ilphonic announces new content plan for 2024 and 2025 for Predator Hunting Grounds. And they go on to say that the jungle is alive once again. Predator Hunting Grounds will release new content in 2024 and in 2025 with the game's original creator and uh, and obviously uh, a, a multiplayer expert, expert, Elphonic Incorporated, as the publisher, collaborating with 20th Century Fox to breathe more life into this fan-favorite game. And this is, this is what they go on to say, I quote, this game has a strong, enthusiastic player base and a vocal community that wants to see this game updated and supported, remarked Charles Brungant, CEO of Elphonic. Now that Elphonic is publishing the game, mm -hmm. we knew uh, we had to get Predator Hunting Grounds back, but we also needed to get it on other platforms. Uh, and obviously, it is releasing for the first time, folks, on Xbox Series X and S. Uh, it is using Unreal Engine 4.27, and well, uh, they have uh, it's it's expected to have uh, a later release this year. In winter of 2024, there's going to be a set of new Predators, as well as new and more advanced Predators coming the way in spring of 2025. Uh, this is a game, again, maybe it's not for you. Uh, it's certainly for me, I'm a Predator fan. There are not many Predator games out there. This is certainly right. the largest topic of the show, but it is a multiplayer game. And again, it was exclusive for many years to PlayStation Steel. Well, you said you played it. It wasn't your cup of tea, but, well, Xbox is the multiplayer box. This could find some new life here, uh, and uh, I I'm, I'm here for it. I think that this is a game, personally, mm -hmm. that Xbox should go after to get into uh, Game Pass. I think you, when you, uh, there is a difference when it comes to multiplayer versus single player when you get a game that needs people playing the game to live get a game like that into xbox game pass more eyes more hands more players what are your thoughts man uh i i 100 agree with that um i was the way that i found out about predator hunting grounds was because i am a fan of the alien and predator uh movie series and all that stuff um uh, more so a fan of the predators just because of the aesthetic of that character um and the different types that there end up being and predator hunting grounds does have a lot of that content in there customization um, especially for the Predator. And that was the main side that I was uh, I was playing when I jumped into the game. Um, the main, the excitement for me for that is seeing that they are revisiting mechanics of the gameplay. So I'm hoping that they update it quite a bit because my biggest issue with the game was it doesn't feel smooth. Um, and I, when I say smooth, I mean more from more so movement wise and what I would prefer. Um, for an example, as you're playing with Predator, you're up in the trees, doing invisible and stuff like that. When you're jumping down from the trees, it could just be clunky and stuff. Um, or when you're trying to get into a certain position, it it could be clunky, clunky and whatnot. Excuse me. And there were just little things that I felt like if they were adjusted um, gameplay wise, if they got in there and really made those changes, they, they have a very unique game on their hands. Now, the other thing too, is that I heard people say that the game um, was kind of unbalanced uh, on one side or the other, because once you get good with the predator, and again, this is a thing in all games, but um, <laughs> people were feeling that if you got, People, if people were decent with the Predator, it felt extremely unbalanced for the human players because that's a 4v1 kind of scenario, right? Yes. There's one player who controls the Predator and then um, it's four people, co-op squad, kind of going through missions um, and you're trying to extract at some point without getting destroyed by the Predator. So, um, and it adds a lot of cool game concepts. I do think it will bode well and better on the xbox side of things but it's already been on pc um and that's one of the biggest audiences as far as multiplayer go going uh multiplayer games go as well um and with it having 
does not having the traction that it used to have and people not really talking about it evolved. That was another game that I was when I was playing and that's what I kind of thought of. Although yeah. I felt a little bit I, I like the power fantasy a little bit more in Evolve because it was like you're like this Godzilla type creature, this kaiju type creature, and you're fighting these four guys. That, that was just a dope concept, tearing stuff down. But as a predator, you have to make it the movement for me is so integral to that game because yeah. you have to make it feel like it's seamless. Like you can jump in the trees, you can move over here, you can move over there, you can get behind characters, you can, if you go invisible, because there's a lot of other mechanics um, that you have to kind of come to understand and get familiar with. But again, um, maybe it was just me not spending enough time with it and wanting to get used to it. I just felt like it, it felt weird to me. Uh, but I never played the human side of it, so that could be a lot of fun. I just didn't have like general interest in it. Um, but I hope with the changes that they are making, uh, that it does make it more appealing, that it gets a, a new life and maybe we get a number two, for an example. It is a good base game. I will say that for sure, because it doesn't have any story content or anything like that. It's just a straight up multiplayer game. Um, but it is a really good base game with seemingly a decent amount of content, maps and other things. Um, like Scott Free was saying in the chat, it's not fun on the human side. So it's like, you have to find a way to balance that out. Uh, so as long as they do those things, they they could definitely revitalize this game. Um, and hopefully it's not, they're not biting off more than what they can chew. But I do agree with you, Boom. I, I think this is one of those games because it's been out since 2020 that you throw in the game pass for at least a few months yep. to see if you can up the engagement because what's the point of making all of these changes um, do, and putting it on a different platform, possibly, you know, spending more money on servers or whatever else the case may be, and it still have the same traction that it had before. I don't know if that if that helps. Um, <laughs> Xbox International saying no, you can't balance it out because Predator are big dudes and strong. No, nah, they need to. They do need to balance. They need to balance out their movement. Um, but again, I, I, I get it. It's it just needs to be definitely needs a little bit more balancing. But yeah, it's an exciting game to see. I like it. I think it's pretty as well. Um, it does touch on a lot of the things that we would kind of look for in that type of game. But it could be better. Yeah, I mean, listen, again, it's it's coming to Xbox for the first time. I'm mm -hmm. excited about it. Uh, I still own it for PlayStation 4. I haven't put a significant amount of time into it. I will play it on Xbox. Uh, I am buying it if it's mm -hmm. not available in Game Pass. But if, I'm, if anyone from Xbox is listening, and we know, Mav, that they listen to this particular show, which is freaking awesome, this is a type of game that will live or die with base, based on its player count. Yes. Um, now, obviously, I don't. I don't remember uh, if you could play with bots, uh, Steel. I don't remember. It's been a while since I played the game. Um, um, I don't know if you can. I know. It, I know that when I load, when you load in, it typically tries to find a match. Because when I was playing as Predator, um, since that was the only thing I was playing, I was. It was. It was a queue time of anywhere between three to five minutes okay. at the time um now if you're on the human side apparently it was faster because again it's going to be a little bit of a wider pool more players on that side anyway right. um so that was seemingly a little bit quicker to get into that was about two to four minutes or anywhere between one to three so the, i mean it seems like they had we're getting good engagement and the, the, there's a base there but i i don't recall if you can put bots maybe in a private match or something so you could practice because i know you maybe. can practice you can definitely practice and stuff i think there was a training mode and stuff and stuff like that so all right, uh, Mav. What do you what are your thoughts on on, on this? Uh, you know, originally a PlayStation exclusive multiplayer game. It doesn't surprise me that it didn't you know blow up the internet, uh, because well, again, I I know there are multiplayer fans on uh, on on PlayStation. Well, just look at Call of Duty, look at Apex Legends, look at Fortnite. Perfect example of people buying a box that's very popular. PlayStation Five, you know, is a popular brand. Um, and it's selling very well. People are going to play multiplayer games of those ilk. Predator, maybe not so much, but if you drop this, and, and it's an interesting theory, maybe this drops into PlayStation uh, PS Plus. Uh, maybe they get a bag from Sony because they originally worked with them, but Microsoft is always looking to work with small developers. Uh, what are you, Is there any excitement for you personally with Predator Hunting Grounds coming to Series X? and do you think this is, this is something that would benefit a Game Pass drop? No, I mean, Game Pass would definitely... The game would benefit definitely from Game Pass. I don't know 
how much Game Pass would benefit from the game. You know what I mean? Yeah, but like, I, I, I think the game would benefit in that way if they can make that deal. Um, we'll see how it does. I remember playing the game uh, when it came out and I I just got to be honest. I just thought it was just OK or whatever. And I got right. bored super fast. Mm-hmm. I didn't That's like fair. it and I just yeah, stopped yeah. playing it. You know what I mean? So it was like I had a little bit of excitement because it's like, oh, Predator multiplayer. You know, this is really cool. But um, after that, but, it's like, uh. yeah, after I played it, I was like, OK, it yeah, has that I'm, feel. It's I'm, weird. I'm, I'm done with this. That was great for or not really, but it was a thing. You know, uh, for a little bit. Looks good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I just, re- I have no excitement for that reason. However, mm-hmm. I will say because of the updates they're they're doing to it, um, and the fact that it did have like that next gen type update to it and putting on an Xbox, if it's in Game Pass down the line, or if it's like somehow free to play in, in any kind of way, I will give it a, another go. But I just don't plan on spending any money on this thing after playing it on PlayStation before, um, just from what I experienced. I, I can't remember That's if it fair. was like just the first, I think it's like the first week the game came out, I played it. Um, I don't remember if it was in PlayStation Plus back then, or if there was like an open play time or something like that, or maybe I bought it. I, I don't even remember because <laughs> the game literally, I forgot all about it. And when I heard, when I saw this news, I'm like, why is everybody talking about this game? You know, and I was like, well, it's coming to Xbox now as a former PlayStation exclusive. I'm like, oh, okay, Yeah, that's cool. Uh, I wish it was a different one, you know, but that's just that's just me. I think uh, the the good thing about the game, I'm not trying to trash on it. Right. Like it has a dedicated player base. Otherwise, you wouldn't be getting this. You know, I I agree. And they actually said that in the press release. uh, Mav. Right. So they, they have enough players to have a reason to do this update and to Mm -hmm. continue to support the game and to try and grow it you know so that's a that's a positive there it doesn't have to be for me i'm i agree with you steel it's surprising after playing it (laughs) but it's 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 impressive yeah 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 it's the thing like you know it's i think it's because it is uh for whatever it's worth it's unique you know it's it is it it definitely is it's asymmetrical. It's based on Predator, mm-hmm. right? It's not like the jankiest game ever, but it's not like the oh, yeah. most polished, right? Either. So, um, I think that ultimately, as long as there's a player base who cares about it, and uh, the more people who get a chance to play it, uh, that's good. It's just I'm not personally excited for it. And again, not the biggest story. Obviously, it it, it is in the thumbnail, but that's because I'm a, a big old nerd and I love Predator. <laughs> uh, I, again, I was asking Steel. Uh, I know that you're a fan of of film. Uh, did anyone uh, in the chat raise your hand? Check out the the Predator on Hulu. That was exclusive. Wow. Yeah. With Prey. The, yeah. Yes. Oh good. my God. With the indigenous um, yeah. uh, uh, um, warriors. Holy moly! What a what a story. If you missed out on Prey, please, for the love of Joe, go watch that film. Incredible storytelling. Uh, it just was the best Predator film probably since the original. And the, and the other one that I really liked was the one with uh, Robert Rodriguez, who directed it. Predators was another one. Freaking phenomenal. Uh, wish he would redirect. I love uh, I love him as a director. And he he killed that. The Predators was amazing, but yeah, Prey was a great. If you missed out on it, definitely ch- check that out. Uh, Adidas Twenty Zero, who has been a channel member, folks, for fifteen months. Wow, brother, that's very kind to you. He says, "Let's go, indeed, let's go." And you know what? Let's go to the next topic. Um, and Steel, I'm going right to you, brother, because Ooh. well, uh, we have learned that Dragon's Dogma Two. Mm-hmm. Has sold over 2.5 million units since launch worldwide, uh, and that now the Dragon's Dogma series has grown to over 10 million units lifetime. Now, gra- now, granted, some people are gonna be like 2.5 million across three platforms. That's not that's not a lot. First of all, the game just came out. I think it's two. Was it a week old? Is it two weeks old? It's a week old. Uh, it's, It'll so be it's a week, a week old. This old. Week. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. about a week old. 
that's not bad uh, for a game that is not for everyone. Steele has talked about it on Living Split Screen. I, I have said it. It is not or anything like Elden Ring. Uh, it does have difficulty. You saw me get my, my rear handed to me multiple times in this game. And mind you, I think when you're watching now, I think I'm a level 28. Mm -hmm. And I, I found this new area, and I'm on the hunt for Medusa. That That is the mission that I'm on, and I'm very excited. I've heard some really cool things about that. Uh, Steel was schooling me on what I have to do to gain the power of her vicious gaze that will turn anything into stone. So hunting, I'm going to be hunting that dragon that kicked my ass. I'm looking for you, fella. I cannot wait to turn you to stone, but... Yeah, I, I'm I'm infatuated with the game. I don't know how many hours I've played. I think I've unlocked maybe a hundred achievement points. It's not an achievement, you know, like go to type of game. Yeah. Um, but still, two point five million copies in a week is pretty good. Now, granted, when you compare it to something like Elden Ring, which a lot of people are doing, even though the games are very different, Elden Ring is a niche game. This. It's an action adventure RPG. I don't know it's if it's niche. niche. It's still niche. Maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's it's niche. But again, look, you watch the gameplay. I can't get enough of it. All I want to do is play this game. It is, and Steele and I were talking before Mav uh, got into the green room. It is a game ass game or video a video game ass video game. It is everything that you could want. Um, I, I give it high praises. I know a lot of people are like, yeah, I'm going to wait for a sale. Do yourself a flavor and play one of the best releases of 2024 uh, immediately. Uh, if you are, if you like Witcher, I think this is a, I think it's very comparable to The Witcher uh, in in many aspects. Is it one to one? No, um, but it is phenomenal. And the and again, Steele and I were talking. The 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 moment to moment gameplay is just so outrageous uh yeah. that you, you just you have to experience it for yourself um there's been a couple of updates i have found a lot and i say a lot i think you saw in my my inventory i think i had seven or eight of the um warping stones that you need to fast travel uh i didn't have any of the uh uh, wake stones that bring you back to life. Obviously, so I died. I got to get a few of those. I have not. I found a couple of pieces, but I haven't even put one together. So I have to get some more of those. But I, I, I'll be honest with you. I have. I don't die a lot, but the, the, because the moment to moment is so spectacular, you saw what happened. I was, I was fighting a rock golem for the second one, and out of nowhere, Griffin comes out, and it was mayhem. Uh, it was great. Steel, what, what are your thoughts on 2.5 million copies? I'm very interested to see where most of those sales are coming from. Is mm -hmm. it Xbox leading the chart? I would say it's probably PC if I had mm -hmm. to if I had to if I had to guess. Uh, but uh, let's talk about it, man. Um, it's 2.5 impressive. I, I to be consistent in the scale of things, um, considering the platforms that it's on. Um in some ways, in some ways it is, and in some ways it's not. The way the way that I feel yeah. that it is is because it's getting more recognition than the first game did, um, and that is an extremely positive thing because the first game was extreme was also very unique. There is no other game um, that I can think of, at least outside of Mass Effect, um, that gives me the feeling of the pawn system. How intrinsically close that I feel to these characters, even when I swap them out. Now I'm over level 50 now. So me swapping out character, uh, my pawns has become less frequent, but I've also become much more choosy. And I've, and I've done, done this the entire time I've been playing, but I, be, but I'm very choosy about the pawns that I take with me because I want them to be with me for some time. Right. Um, and I based them off of what I need from a party and everything else. Uh, the reason I say I think Dragon's Dogma is still a niche game is because of the type of game that it is. People are going to jump into this game thinking it's just like every other open world game that they've played. They may jump into it and say, oh, well, I heard people say that it's kind of like Skyrim. So I'm going to approach it like that. And that is not what this game is. Um, again, I'm not here to excuse the game um, or say oh, in help the devs make money. I'm, that's not what I'm here for. The only thing that I'm here for is to say that um, I'm really loving what I'm playing from this game and I have not felt this way about a game since I played Mass Effect Legendary Edition. 
a thousand percent. Um, the feelings that I get from this game are even stronger than what I felt about Starfield while I was playing it. Now, Starfield, of course, has better side missions and story in the story content, but it is meaning is Starfield is trying to tell that story in a certain way, whereas Dragon's Dogma is more of a choose your adventure kind of thing this isn't a game where you say oh just give me a bunch of quests and i'll just go do the quest no obviously fast travel isn't easily accessible although they do have ox carts that can essentially get you to the points in between where you can't fast travel um so there's a lot of aspects of this game that aren't traditional that as more people fall into it or they hear about it, start playing it, they ha will have to get used to. And this game is extremely unforgiving if you're not willing to bend to its will a bit and really understand that, hey, OK, I need to adventure. I need to figure out, OK, maybe I don't like the warrior class or maybe I try a mage. Oh, man, I really like these mage abilities. So how, I'll build this out. Oh, man, what about there's a lot mystic spear hand? Maybe, maybe I try that out for a bit. It is one of those games. And again, I'm also somebody who is I'm very against you having to spend hours with a game for you to get into it. I don't think that it, if comparatively to other games, open world games that have come out, um, I think within the first hour, this game kind of pulls you into what it's trying to do for you. Um, but again, I'll be also fair and say I do have some basis with having played Dragon's Dogma 1. So I already, I personally feel like I have a skewed a little bit of, a, of an opinion towards it because I kind of prepped already unintentionally because I didn't know we were going to get it to. I just went back and played Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen because people were saying, man, it's a good game. There's nothing like it. And that's when I was introduced to that pawn system. That's when I was introduced to the system that reminds me of the Nemesis engine, right? Yes. Where it's like, oh, you run into these different characters in the world in Dragon's Dogma makes me feel like I'm playing those Shadow of War and Mordor games to where it feels like the, the world is alive compared to me. And the world is interacting with me in compared to, uh, to me interacting with the world. Everything is still, I, I can walk away and I come back and it feels like these people were still living a life. So that's just, that's just me. Um, I do think it's a very special game. I do think this is a game that's going to end up getting traction as we move forward. Um, as performance improves, I think the main thing that's working against, uh, very negatively against it um, is, well, one, the misinformation about the microtransactions. Everybody yes. was making a ton of content about yeah. that um, and really eating off of it. So there's one. Again, can't make that excuse for them. That's up to Capcom to correct and address, which they did. They put out an update and added additional things in there and to make it uh, smooth over for people. Again, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, if nobody else would have told you, you probably would have never known it was there. And the, uh, and the performance. Whether people on the series consoles or PlayStation 5s are saying, well, man, the performance is because I've seen plenty of people. Oh, I've never had a problem. And again, I try to be very, I try to be very humble because me and Pong played Cyberpunk 2077. I played on PC. He played on Series X and we had very minimal problems. And we kind of talked about, hey, this is a really good game, but we still, you know, acknowledge the performance issues. And I still have to do that here. As much as I can power through, some of us have the ability to play at 60 and power through. I do think it's a huge disservice for not only to have that negative attention on the game, but then also follow it up with, oh, the drops in the city and then um, making the excuse that, oh, it's the processor and, oh, it's just the city. But you go on. No, no. It's not a smooth experience. It's the same thing that people complained about um, in Jedi Survivor. If we're if it's not going to be consistent with that, because it's, it's the exact same issue. You get into these towns, and Jedi Survivor arguably is much worse because there's not that many people in comparison, <laughs> and there's more and there are more loading screens in that game. But I, it's just you have to keep things consistent for the sake of consistency and just be very open to the fact that, Hey, there is issues with this. It's not a perfect game, but if anything, it's definitely one of the more unique open world experiences that I've had in some time. Um, and if it's not for you within the first hour or so for just return the game and skip over, it doesn't have to be for you. Um, that's the, that's the only thing, but I'm, I'm really loving it again, almost a hundred hours in, haven't even beat the game yet. Um, I don't even know where I'm at. Maybe I'm towards the end. I just, 
every time that I get in, I pick up direction. I start exploring a part of the map that I haven't went to yet. And I'm finding new things and just enjoying my journey for what it is. Let, yesterday, I was recording some gameplay and I just sat in the ox cart for the first time for about 20 minutes just to see. Because uh, I was also busy doing things, but I sat there for 20 minutes and my pawns, anybody run up on us, my pawns and handle them. And I was just sitting there hanging out and I just got a <laughs> clip of just us traveling. It was it was it's super dope. The fact that things like that can happen um, is, is cool. And uh, the last thing I'll say for those who are like crucifying the game about enemy variety. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how many other games that you've played that have this wide range of enemies, but this isn't different from a lot of other games that I've played. <laughs> even even Mass Effect, I think, is again, is a GOAT game for me. Yes, it doesn't yeah. have the greatest enemy variety. <laughs> Halo doesn't have the greatest enemy variety. It's the same enemies in every game. And they've had, some of them have even share movement between the factions. So it's just, I, I, I get it. Yes, I would like to have seen more, especially coming over from the first game. But I think their overall goal was to hit everything that they were trying to do with the first game and actually garner the attention um, that they missed that first time around. So I'm enjoying. No, it. I mean, great, great points all around. No. I mean, listen, the, the the randomness about the game that we keep we keep talking about, and I know a lot of people in the chat uh, <laughs> don't really care for it. I, I listen, I hear you. Not every game is for every gamer. Who was it that that uh, Xboxer Mike? I mean, come on, dude. Hello, hello, neighbor two. I think phenomenal. Come on, you got to give me some more credit than that for crying out loud. I like games, and I like a lot of games. Um, this is one of them. Now, I you know again, I I'm not supposed to like Elden Ring. Elden Ring was not my type of game. I am not a Souls guy, not even remotely. And somehow or another. Game of the year for me. Uh, this is another one where I saw the, I saw what it was. I played the original for a, maybe about an hour, maybe two. And I'm like, yeah. You know, you, you, you come across, I think the first one was the, um, in a Darker, Darker Arisen. Uh, I think the first boss, it was like a training boss. It was the it's one. A the yeah, the it's a Chimera. Yes, yeah, yes, Chimera. Yes, 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 yes. And I was yeah. like, I'm climbing on this thing. I'm whacking away. I may, you know, pawns are running around like, what the it's hell, pawns? I have no idea. This is ridiculous. <laughs> so I, I, I bought it. I, I, I think it was on sale. It's backwards compatible, uh, compatible, I think. And I was like, yeah, you know, not for me. So when it, when I saw this, I'm like, okay, this, I'm, I'm watching this, and I'm like, man, this gives me those Elden Ring vibes. Oh my god, I, I'm gonna have to get in on this. And again, I, I bought games, and I'm like, sorry that I bought. Um, but I, I'm not sorry I bought this. Uh, this game is phenomenal. Uh, for, Mav, let, let's get you in on the conversation because we haven't had a chance to talk about if you're playing, what you've experienced, and you know, are, are 2.5 million copies sold across three platforms in a week? Considering that there was a lot of negativity following up following this game, you know, regarding the microtransactions, the 30 frames per second. What, 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 what are your thoughts, man? Yeah, I think ultimately uh, the sabotagers that tried to sabotage the hype of the game have failed. It, it's doing really well, especially if you compare it to the success of the first game, right, which has been out for a very long time. Uh, this game is just dwarfing the numbers that Dragon's Dogma 1 did, which is what you want from a sequel, right? You establish yeah. uh, an IP, a game, uh, and over the years, you know, it's got enough uh, word of mouth and people and kind of respect and then now you go go heavy with the marketing for the sequel and then people get really excited for it and uh buy the game now i think that they've established this as a uh big time ip uh as far as success wise i mean it, it's selling really well i mean especially if you compare it to numbers of like the final fantasy games you know yeah. like if you were to if you were to tell me that like 10 years ago, Dragon's Dogma would be selling at the same pace or more than Final Fantasy games. Like, I'd be like, nah, that's not going to happen, yeah. you know? But that's the world we live in today. Uh, because, you know, one thing is because it's actually, you can buy it in multiple places. So that's always a positive. But uh, more than anything, it's just, it's just a really unique game, man. I, I freaking love it. It's, it has um, that Bethesda-ness when it comes to like emergent gameplay 
where like anything can kind of happen when you're out there. You don't you don't know what to expect. Um, and that's rare for like a from a game from the East, you know, like usually yeah. um, Eastern flavor games, uh, Japanese games or whatever, like you're you're going to have more linear paths a lot of times or kind of just like um, re- really good stories a lot, but more directed, you know, uh, even if it's open world, a lot of times feel more directed with, with this is like, OK, you you can go somewhere and it's it's like everything seems random and sometimes even if it's not you know like you go into a dungeon and, and finish something you leave and you're not expecting another thing to ha- to happen with that quest line because you think you just finished it and hope oh, there's something else to do because they just sprung it on you like that and it, i f- it's one of those games where you feel like no two people's playthroughs are the same because yep. it's it's your experience you know it's your experience that you're you're and they've mastered this way with the pawn system that I cannot believe other games have not copied this. Like they make you feel like you're playing co-op multiplayer and yeah, when you're playing sure a single do. player game, right? Yeah. So it gives you that sense of accompaniment because the AI and the the characters, even the personalities of the uh, pawns that they have are just absolutely amazing. And then the, the fact that you can choose your pawn, you can choose your friends' pawns, and all those other kind of things, it just yeah. adds to this like social um feeling in a single player game and it's like why don't more companies do things like that because it it kind of like makes you feel like you belong to something bigger even though you're playing by yourself right but then you can play this game and you could go and do different random things for like 10 hours and be like i only really accomplished one thing today in my 10 hour playthrough but man what I really accomplished was just having a blast and going on this crazy adventure. And I have memories now from it. Right. And so when you can make a game like that, that's what a Western style kind of RPG is, you know, and they've blended the best things for me about JRPGs and the best things for me about Western RPGs and have combined it into this thing that is crazy unique and you can't experience anywhere else unless you're playing dragon's dogma and not only that but the gameplay is super fluid the combat's great the graphics are great uh i really don't have any negative things to say about the game yeah performance could be better but then at the cost of what like i don't want them to stifle in this kind of ambition i've seen lots of game gamers say i want every game to be you know completely 100 percent this or that you know at, at launch no updates ever no, none of this other kind of things right I agree. I would love that as well. But when I see a game like Dragon's Dogma 2 and everything that they're doing and everything they're accomplishing in a world like that, it's like I can understand kind of why it happens in a game like Dragon's Dogma. You know, I can't understand why it happens in a game like Jedi Survivor when it's like more narrow path scripted things. But I mean, just look at this thing. Like even just when you're you're running around right there, like how how far back does the uh, does your view go? You know what I mean? It's like you can see every you can see everything, and it's a gorgeous world that they're building with pure emergent gameplay, different kinds of enemies, uh, all this different stuff happening with the pawn system and great combat. And it's like, yeah, I kind of get that pushing the boundaries and pushing things forward like this sometimes can cause performance issues you know but if it's going to be 30 math the only thing i would refute on that if it's going to be 30 it needs to be a smooth game there's no excuse for that again if you can't do 60 okay cool but if you're going to pitch it at 30 at least have it be consistent 30 not drop down to 20 they need to be more optimized i agree like i bet the whole thing about consistency that's it (laughs) the whole thing i think a lot of people don't like the fact that it's like an uncapped and instead it's like a uh just a lock you say update it yeah so you can lock it now so when when it when it had that like i'm kind of like love the fact that there's uncapped there is a at least uncapped option for the future because yeah if future proofs my game because like right now, if you go and play the original Dragon's Dogma, you're stuck playing that boy yeah. at thirty. Mm-hmm. You know, no matter what, like it's twelve years later, you you're still playing it at thirty <laughs> frames. You can't do anything about it. You know, uh, if you're playing on console, at least I, I don't know how it is on PC. But on that, PC, you can play at whatever frame. You yeah, right. So like, but on console, you're stuck at playing at thirty. 
because they never went and updated. But like uncapped now, if you get a new Xbox later, uh, if they do an update on it, or if you do like uh, the PS5 Pro or wh- whatever, you know, you're going to get the benefits of that. And this game is only going to get better as new hardware comes out. So I I like that aspect, but yeah, man, yeah. like like Cyberpunk too. Before like they were pushing so many boundaries with that game and like and being so ambitious. Same thing with Starfield. Like I I want these games to the games like this that are really trying to do something to not be held back by like these arbitrary things, right? Optimization is always key. Right, but I don't want games to be smaller and less ambitious for the sake of, yeah, you know, we need everything to be at 60. I want everything to be at 60, but, like, if they can't do it because of a game like this, then then that's okay with me, right? Like, never go back to the ages of gaming where everything is, like, retro style gaming and that's what people want you know I, I i want things like this that push things forward and they man they they, they accomplished so many great things with this game boom uh oh, dude you know, it's the the moment to moment but i i think i don't think that you know as much as we continue to talk about the graphics and and the performance and and how there's this incredible draw because of you, yeah every corner that you turn could be nothing or something super cool like for instance uh I walked, I'm traveling to my next, my next destination. No big deal. I see a cave. I'm like, oh, okay. Let me go into the cave. Turns out there's like a, like a, like a dozen wolves in there. So, you know, it's, it's a dead end cave. You kill the wolves. You figure, okay, there's gotta be a chest in here. No, there was a little, little kid in there. He's like, oh my God, thank you. You saved me. I was exploring and the wolves trapped me. Uh, and I'm like, oh, okay. So we saved this kid. This is great. Turns out to be a whole side mission. Mm-hmm. Because we got to now take the kid back to his town that I didn't know existed on the map that didn't wasn't on my map, but now is because we brought him into this town and we got a bunch of loot because we brought him back and we found a a bunch of other uh, uh, side missions that I'm like, this this game is just crazy. Um, Again, I don't have the footage here per se. And I was telling Steel. just a random random thing i'm walking up a a path i hear a roar i'm like okay that definitely sounds like something big it was an ogre and mav what was interesting what happened next is i i run forward all right i'm the roscoe jenkins of the of of the of the pack Mm -hmm. i'm always getting myself in trouble right so i run and the giant is walking towards a bridge he puts his one foot on the bridge and I start chopping the bridge. He the bridge collapses, he falls across the ravine. He is now a, a, a ogre bridge. He can't get up. And we're and we again, it's a bridge over a huge gap. So me and my crew, which are obviously NPCs, start chopping his legs and he falls to his death. Like, what game have you played in the last? five years that does that i mean obviously starfield is a good is a good one for that because there's a lot of randomness there but this was crazy Mm -hmm. um and he fell to his death and i'm like wow i I can't believe i killed an ogre by just chopping his legs and he fell over and he got stuck it was hilarious yeah um oh man i i had uh i saw that clip by the way it was absolutely hilarious um i had um fuzzy's pond with me uh her name was her name was Cinnamon, <laughs> with an S. Uh, no, with, no, with no a it's, C. With the, it's with a C. Her, <laughs> her, her name was Cinnamon, and I was rocking with Cinnamon. And then I, I you know, I got into a fight with uh, an ogre, and he was like down in like a ravine, and I was trying to stay up top. And then it was not till later I realized Cinnamon's gone. <laughs> I don't, oh snap! I, know, I don't know what happened to Cinnamon. Happened to Cinnamon. I was just I was just walking for like an hour, uh, you know, doing like uh, battles and stuff, and I just realized, oh shit, I think I killed Cinnamon. I I don't I don't know what happened, by, but uh, sorry, Fuzzy. Um, Cinnamon's 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 gone. Cinnamon's toast. Cinnamon. Toast. You know, shout out to Sir X Men who's actually using uh, uh Mrs. Boom's uh, pawn. Now she doesn't play the game, obviously, but I, I did make my my main pawn uh, uh, uh her character. She's like she's always a mage in whatever game she plays, 
And, you know, I tried to get his clothes, blonde hair, short blonde hair, blue eyes. Uh, and he was like, hey, man, she's actually pretty good. I'm like, yeah, she's actually really damn good. I think she's level 28 or 29 now. So, yeah, that, it, this, oh, man, it's, what what can we say? I'm sure we're boring people in the chat. Um, but, look, <laughs> this is this is a game that I cannot get enough of. And, obviously, if if you if you're not sold on it yet, and maybe you're kind of on the fence, maybe you don't spend the seventy bucks. Um, you know that's up to you. Uh, you know, again, if if it's not your type of game, you definitely feel slighted if you bought it for seventy bucks. Uh, I would definitely check CD Keys. I think they had it for sixty three dollars the other day. I got a notification for the Xbox or PlayStation version. Ch and again, ch keep checking. Um, um, you know. You, you, you might find a sale on it, but I do want to move on, gentlemen, to the final topic of the show. But before we do that, I do want to say everyone that uh, won the pair of limited edition Xbox coins uh, designed by uh, Ben Kenobi of Twitter, uh, those have been mailed out. You should get them in the next day. Coming via FedEx, and yes, I got clobbered by FedEx this morning, but you know, such is life. That's uh, you know, this is why we don't really do physical uh, physical giveaways because when you go to ship it, next time I'm going to do it at the post office because man, I love our 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 local FedEx. They're awesome, but we got clobbered. But before we get into the final topic, because you know, again, this old man is old and he does forget things. I want to talk about the Valari gaming pillow, folks. Uh, this is a pillow that I use on a daily basis. Uh, I am. Fortunate to have been gifted the Iron Lords branded pillow. Uh, they have teamed up with the Valari Gaming Pillow. I believe it was sometime early last year. Well, that same company reached out to Double Barrel Gaming towards the end of 2023. And as you know, and maybe you don't, uh, I was a New York City police officer and had my career. Well, it wasn't cut short. I had 21 years on the job, but it came to a screeching halt because I had a serious spinal cord injury uh, that had to be surgically repaired. Now, I'm walking and I'm doing everything great, but I'm just not the same guy. And the job basically told me that I couldn't do it anymore, and they weren't wrong. Um, and gaming, as we know, as gamers, right, no matter how in shape we are, and I am trying to get myself back to, like, proper shape. I'm in my 14th week of Supernatural VR uh, boxing fitness, and it's phenomenal. I've taken off almost 15 pounds, and it's just great. But with that said, we hunch over when we're playing games, right? That's that's just our nature. We hunch over. The hands go into the laps, into the knee area, and we're kind of hunched over. For me, it's painful. And, well, it doesn't really work well for me, especially if I'm going to sit and play D Dragon's Dogma for like three hours, which is what I want to do like right now. Uh, but when the Valari Gaming Pillow reached out to us, I was a little skeptical and we get we get offers all the time to partner up with, you know, mobile games that I have no interest in and companies want to sell their wear. Sometimes their controllers, sometimes their accessories. And look, folks, I'm going to be honest with you. We if I'm not going to use it, I'm not going to sell it. Uh, and we you know, they sent us a pillow uh, and I used it. And then King David gifted me a pillow. And that's the one that I you know specifically use. And it works wonders especially if and if you're anyone that has a back problem this pillow does work phenomenal i know people that make fun of me if i say that word but that's it it does uh so check out the commercial uh this commercial was 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 made for for me uh sean labrie an amazing artist in the community is the one that uh, crafted this master class uh, commercial and uh if you are interested uh they are offering right now folks uh, if you order from the Valari Gaming Pillow dot com, not only can you save twenty percent off of your uh, um, order using the code uh, DBG. Uh, I believe I'm sorry, it's not twenty; it's fifteen. Uh, DBG fifteen at checkout, you can get a twenty dollar gift card to the store as a bonus. Uh, go to right now again. All you got to do is go into the show notes. Uh, and you'll see the link for it. It's DBG15 at checkout. And uh, I think you're going to dig it. Check it out.
And there you go, folks. Uh, again, I, I, you know, listen, we, we don't partner and we don't have a lot of people knocking down the door, especially like branded name, uh, uh, you know, uh, items. Uh, you know, we, 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 we've worked with a few in the past, uh, but they're great. They're great small mom and pop type of uh, a company uh, out of Dubai. And uh, as a matter of fact, I have a meeting with them this week. Uh, we're in the I'm in talks to bring a double barrel gaming branded pillow uh, to their lineup, and I think that is freaking phenomenal. Uh, I've already seen the sketch artwork for it, and it looks so good. Like, wow, the stitching is really sharp. It is the new logo that was done, of course, by Sean Labrie. But listen, thank you so much for taking you know a couple of seconds to check out the the commercial DBG15 to check out to save. Uh, 15% off your order. And right now you get a free $20 gift card when you go to their website and you make your first order. But listen, Steel Rain, I want to get into a tweet. Now, again, this this just literally came across our desk. Uh, and I want to make it a topic because, you know, ABK is closed, right? Mm -hmm. Forget about what's going on with the, the FTC and those knuckleheads over there. That's going to be uh, that's going to be sent to Hades within within the next couple of months. And it's fine. But most gamers have been waiting for the onslaught, Steel Rain, of Activision and Blizzard games coming to Xbox Game Pass because, well, why wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. So Crusader2, uh, SLR on Twitter, says, uh, responding to Xbox Game Pass, right? Now, Game Pass literally just put out a, a tweet uh, with the new games that are coming out in the for, for the first set of games available for April, uh, that th those games are Kona, which I don't know what it is, uh, a Lego 2K Drive, which Steel Rain is very excited about, uh, a, a game called Lil Gator Game. It looks like a platformer. If it is, I'm probably going to play it like a nerd, but I'm you know I'm going to give it a shot. Shadow of the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. Uh, Botany Manor, which seems like it's a planting game. Again, not for me, but maybe for somebody. Uh, PGA Tour Road to the Masters via EA Play. And finally, Harold Halibut, which I don't even know what it is. It looks like a point-and-click game, but I could be wrong. I don't, I don't have a description in front of me. Well, you know, he actually says, and I'm talking about Crusader 2, Steel, Xbox is sitting on games like Prototype, Spyro, Crash Bandicoot, and Tony Hawk. And this is what they give us. Uh, and Jez Corden, well, you know how I feel about Jez. He's a good friend of mine personally. Love the work that he does, not only on Windows Central, but more specifically with Randall Thor on the Xbox Two podcast, which I have checked my invite box and the Xbox Two Plus One. Still not there, guys. I don't understand. I'm, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna be offended if I don't get an invite. Uh, all jokes aside, Jez Corden responds and says simply, "They're coming now." Now you say, "Okay, what's the big deal?" Boom. What? 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 Why is it? Why is this even a conversation? Well, here's why. Last week, Sarah Bond mm -hmm. put out a tweet where she is standing in front of some cameras. She was filming something now there is a spring event coming around the corner is it for that well i don't know we're gonna we're gonna break that down right now steel could it be a hellblade 2 developers direct well that's possible but being that sarah bond is the president of xbox it would be pretty freaking cool if she was filming something to say hey xbox nation here are all the games like Prototype and like Spyro and Crash mm -hmm. and everything that you've been wanting, like Singularity to drop. Maybe we get some, F, you know, uh, FPS boosts on some of these games. Maybe we get a graphical boost. But people are waiting, and I'm trying to put one and one together to make sense. What are your thoughts on Jez Corden? Because well, he is in the know that these games that this. You, uh, this ex user was asking for. He simply says, "Well, they're coming." Um, I, I think that Jez is right on the nose. I mean, these things take time, and I and I understand that people want them to happen much sooner than later. Um, but without knowing exactly what is going on behind the scenes, um, and exactly how that process works, uh, I 
I'm not going to be so quick to rush and say, oh, man, what about all these other games? Again, you're asking for old games that only a small um, minority are going to end up playing. Now, is it going to be great for the for the catalog? Of course. But um, I also want to make sure that those things are going to be running smoothly and um, that you don't have to cross any like have to go through any other licensing issues or anything like that. And that could be really well what's holding a lot of that stuff back. Who knows? Um, but they are. But we do know that they have constantly said that they are working on that. And that is something that is coming um, for me. I think this kind of touches on when well, you see drops like this for Game Pass and. It takes me a little bit back uh, to 2022 when. I personally felt like Game Pass was strong that year, but the first party output wasn't. Game Pass isn't always going to be perfect on a month to month basis um, as far as the games that are coming in. And honestly, when you look at this, it's hard for me to say that, oh, man, this is a miss considering the other games that are around it. Well, I mean, what were you expecting a Dragon's Dogma to come in there? Were you expecting <laughs> in there all of a sudden? Oh, yeah. it's going to release on, on the console, but it's going to release in Game Pass. Don't worry. Um, like I don't, I, like I don't know. Was again, I mean, I know I've teased it before, but Elden Ring is supposed is that is that what we wanted to come in here? Sure, there's so many other deals that probably could have been cut um, to make this a little bit more juicier. But I mean, again, a game like 2K Drive, even though it is going to be only on cloud on console, that gives me a reason to jump back in on console, maybe run a few rounds with uh, with my youngest because she actually jumped into that not long ago. I ended up getting that game for her, so that that's interesting for me. I saved some money right there. Um, Tomb Raider, maybe I end up jumping in that. I haven't played Tomb Raider since right, it's been a quite a minute um, since I had multiplayer in it, I think, and I ended up taking that out. Um, so boom, that might give me a chance to try a Tomb Raider game. But again, a lot of these, a lot of the times, not everything has to be essentially for me and have to be perfect every month. Now, the value side of it and asking for those other games to be thrown in there, I do think that they need to find a way to get those some of those Activision titles on there, maybe the easier ones, just to kind of throw in there, whether people yeah. feel however they feel about it uh, or not. Maybe a Black Ops 2 comes out. Of, no, but certain games, I, I could imagine just really standing out, um, jumping into there. But again, Game Pass, typically when these drops come up, I see them as more as, hey, here's some games that you might have missed out on. They're newer games, typically. Um, hey, here's some things that you might try. There's a lot of cloud access. Again, you see across the board, I think the biggest thing with a lot of these titles is that cloud access. So maybe you're laying in bed and you're like, what is, what is Herod Halibut? I don't, I don't even know what that is. Let me try it on cloud. Real quick. <laughs> Shucks, boom. I just, the other day, um, you know, shout out to Steam Link, by the way. Um, I just actively used Steam Link the other day, but um, on my phone to get hook up my uh, Razer Kishi too, and I'm getting an adapter so I don't have to take off my case for my um, for my charger port, so it'll be yes. easier to use that device. Um, and if options like that become more and more um, viable, and if you're going to continue to give me a cloud option, hey, maybe while I'm at the doctor, maybe while I'm out at some wherever I'm at, you can just pull out your phone real quick, get some gaming in on a device, um, kind of plug and play, and then boom, try out a couple games, and you're good to go. So that's kind of more so. I don't get overly upset about this, um, or disappointed that certain games aren't coming in because again, I've been told multiple times that they are coming. And as that consumer, as somebody that does, I have a backlog. I got other games to play. I'm about to jump back into Armor Core 6 now because a co-op mod just dropped. Um, so it's like I got so many other games to kind of figure out my library. I'm not necessarily hurt, especially getting something that I wasn't necessarily expecting to get in 2K Drive as an example. And even Tomb Raider, if I want to throw that up there. So, um, again, I, I get the frustration, uh, but I, I just... I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I'm not. I'm not expecting a ten out of ten every month. So, I mean, it's fair. A again, it's it's the one thing about Game Pass that I think uh, gets overlooked is the plethora of genre that is available. Like, yes. okay, so that this is, is not the strongest month for Game Pass. Uh, obviously, we just uh, they they had Diablo Four release on the twenty eighth, um, and these are. Is, is would you consider them weak? Yeah, potentially. I mean, right? Uh, you know, uh, the Tomb Raider game. It's a phenomenal game. Uh, if you've never played it, you can play it now. It's in Game Pass. That's dope. 
Uh, the 2K Drive, the Lego. You, I know you're gonna play it. Um, again, I'm gonna. Get, I was gonna buy it. And I'm like, ah, maybe it sounds like a Game Pass game. I'm glad I did. Now I don't get a chance to play in mm-hmm. Game Pass. Um, but uh, I mean, look, it's it's not the strongest of the of the month of, of well months past. But again, this is we're still early. We're only the second of April. Usually, there's multiple drops throughout the month. So. Again, I think you're oh, onto something. And um, Sir brings up a good point in chat. Um, the other great thing about Game Pass, like especially on these coming soon things, he says, uh, Sir says, another thing about Game Pass is you have no clue if they secretly do a shadow drop. And they've been doing that consistently as well. Like we'll be two weeks into the month, three weeks into the month, and they're just like, oh, here's another game coming in the Game Pass. And you're like, that wasn't on the coming soon list. Where, where did that come from? So. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's it's fine. It's fine. Shout out to Thanaros, good friend of the program. He's been here for many, many years supporting the channel. He says, the day Boom does a sh- Raid Shadows Legends ad is the let's day go. I end. So, brother, listen, <laughs> I apologies for the ad. You know, folks, listen, YouTube only pays so much. Valari's a good company. They're, they're a mom and pop place. We like to help everyone. Uh, that's why we bring in new voices all the time. So, I don't care if you're a podcaster that has 10 subs. Uh, you want a shot on getting your voice heard? Come on, mm-hmm. we'll help promote your stuff. As long as you're you're not toxic, you're not racist or sexist or anything like that, we can hang. I try to help as many people as we can. And, and as for companies, it's funny, uh, Thanaros, uh, Raid Shadow reached out to us, and we said we said no. The only mobile game, well, there's actually two. There are two mobile games. Uh, actually, three. If by some re- ridiculous chance in the heavens of the gaming gods that uh that activision reached out to us to do an ad for call of duty warzone and potentially candy crush you bet your ass i'm gonna do that because that's big time but we're too small uh the only other one that i would love to do because i play it every day is marvel snap oh my Mm -hmm. god it is so freaking good i love marvel snap and yeah, so so don't worry. I, I'm not selling out. I told you folks, you know, we don't we get a lot of offers, especially from the mobile side. We won't do them uh, because we don't play those games. I play three mobile games uh, and uh, one of which I tried Warzone, which looks freaking really good on the phone. But I'm not going to I just wanted to try it. I'm not going to play it religiously. Hell, I don't play it on the, on the console for crying out loud. But yeah, no, it's it's don't worry. We're not selling out, but we are going to continue to run the ad for uh t- twice a week for Valari. They're again, they're a small company. They're really great people. Um, and uh, I believe in the product because I actually use it. And for someone that has back problems like me, it does work. Uh, speaking of back problems, Captain Chats drops a very generous five pound super chat. And he says this currently in bed after uh back spasms two days ago ah dude i'm sorry to hear that hopefully you feel better he says i'm the sa- i'm the same boom can't sit for too long looking at standing desks yeah standing desks do work for a lot of people i know uh Kesante uses one uh, uh religiously for work and when he's on primetime gaming for that matter um but mav let's let, let, let's talk about this because you know, it, it, it is a question that a lot of people have been asking. When are we getting the ABK games? Most of us, you know, s- small thinking, not, not, not realizing how much goes into getting these games playable on uh, through a game pass, right? We thought, oh, as soon as they sign the deal, they're going to they're gonna drop all 100 games in there. And, of course, they confirmed at the end of the year that, yes, they're not coming this year. They're going to come 2024. Sarah Bond's doing some recording. We don't know what she's recording. She was very cryptic. She says, love talking to Team Xbox. Uh, I have, uh, I don't, I, again, just my, my, I'm shooting the breeze here. I don't think when she says Team Xbox, she's talking about the actual team that her, that her, because if you didn't know, X, Sarah Bond is in charge of a Team Xbox. That's mm-hmm. not who she was talking to. She was talking to us in that tweet. Not cryptic. It was just straight up. Love talking to uh, Team Xbox. She's talking to us, uh, the fans. Um, what What are your thoughts on? And again, this no correlation potentially. She's filming something. Jez Corden answers a question that yes, these games are coming. Could they correlate to the spring event? I don't know. But what do you think, Mav? Yeah, I mean, I think people are just so doom and gloom right now, like uh, about everything yeah. <laughs> with gaming and like. So it's like you see the list of games. It's like every 
month, it seems like we get surprises in there. And I would I would never just take the beginning of the month announcement for the games coming to Game Pass as like that's all that's coming to Game Pass. So that's that's one thing. Uh secondly, I do think those other games are going to start rolling out. Um, but you know, they did announce that Diablo is coming to Game Pass uh about a month or so because they did that at a business update event um when they announced that it was coming to game pass in march so um it's took them about a month or so i think between announcement and the actual release so if they kind of go on that cadence i think we'll probably be getting news fairly soon for abk games um i think they want to make a big deal about when some of the call of duties hit and that's going to be a a big moment for them so that would maybe be something you would put on a show like that or like some kind of announcement video if you do like old, some of the older ones and stuff like that just a small batch i don't think it necessarily deserves like a whole presentation like that but if it's something like call of duties and other big abk games all hitting game pass kind of at once or or even just some larger ones and they have some things to announce i think maybe they could do like uh like the the video that or the picture that we saw of sarah bond you know uh team xbox could mean the fans as well i agree with you boom i don't know for sure i don't know if they do like any kind of presentations for employees like that where they actually have like facing on cameras on the stage and stuff like it's it's possible but i wouldn't think that would necessarily be something they would need to go all out for like that um unless it's like uh for some kind of a big event there within the Microsoft campus. But uh, it would, I think it would take a big announcement or some kind of serious thing for them to have some kind of like presentation to the employees, like in that kind of way. Right. So um, I think we're probably going to get some news fairly soon. This yeah. Month. Yeah. I, I, I think, well, I mean, look folks, I mean, we're, we're a month and change away from Hellblade 2. No one's talking about it. Rest assured, yeah. we're going to be talking about it here. I'm sure Mav and, and, uh, and, and Pong and Steel and the rest of the circles that we roll in are going to be talking about. It. It's something to get excited about. That game looks crazy good. And I don't care how long the game is, 8, 10 hours, who gives a shit? It is going to be a uh, freaking amazing. Unreal Engine 5, I think we're going to see the first real pushing of the Xbox Series X hardware. I'm super stoked for that. Uh, I did reach out to some, you know, some, I do have a few tiny connections. Um, and I specifically asked about the video. Um, and I have heard, and this is com this is confirmed that those types of videos, normally they do for incoming employees. Like if they were going to, but that's not what this was. I don't know that for sure. Uh, again, I, that, 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 I'm taking a stab at it. When she says Team Xbox, I mean, she could logistically be talking about a Team Xbox, but I, I personally don't think so. I think she was literally talking to us. And I, and here's my reasoning behind that. Why tweet about it if it wasn't for us, right? I think it doesn't make any sense. She's, she's going to tweet about, uh, about welcoming in new employees on Twitter? No, she wouldn't do that. Why, why would she? It would be ridiculous. I think that she was talking to us. I think there is something... That again, spitballing here, no connections, and please don't take it takes with a grain of salt. I think Mav is onto something. We could be getting some big information soon. What that information is, well, I don't know, but I know that we, there is a spring event planned. Uh, there is uh, the Hellblade 2 release coming in May. Uh, we do have the June showcase. This is not for that. There's no way that they would have taped in late March for a june showcase it just doesn't make any sense yeah it's not that at all um so it's definitely not that but uh look at the end of the day folks we hit four crazy good topics hopefully uh, you know you enjoyed them enough to hit the like button while you're here if you're not subscribed and you're just finding the channel for the first time we would really appreciate you consider subscribing to the channel we do this monday through friday five days a week all different panels great shows and we never use hate mongering or, you know, uh, nonsense that, that you see on Twitter to get you in here. We don't clickbait you to get you in here. What you see is what you get. We have fun. We laugh. We tell you our stories. We're gamers uh, here. And hopefully you enjoyed it enough to consider subscribing. Let's get to the outros. And we'll start first with Steel Rain, who's going to tell you about Living Split Screen, where 
as it was this past uh, Saturday, a nearly five plus hour show. Because you know what? When you're talking about video games with your brother, you could just go all day. Brother, sell the plan, sell, sell your brand of living split screen on Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And where can people subscribe and reach out to you on? social media yeah you know when you're just loving what you're getting into it just you can't help yourself and uh we'll keep track of time so it's maybe maybe, maybe that's what it is now uh nonetheless you can find me steel rain that's i steel rain i that t is a seven everywhere google's probably the easiest place to type that information um and other than that every saturday morning 9 a.m central 10 a.m eastern and 3 p.m uk time um i do and I am one half of the dynamic new duo known as Living Split Screen, a non console centric centric platform, <laughs> excuse me, um, <laughs> that talks about everything going on in the gaming universe, uh, taking the RTS approach and also that ECP educated consumer perspective. Um, and also right here on the Xbox Factor podcast, where we get to dive deep with one of the pillars of the community, Mr. Boomstick XL, and just bring Thank some you, passion to uh, the overall um xbox community and hopefully we can breathe bleed green a little bit uh shout to dirt and those guys so yeah. um but much love greatly appreciate you for having us boom and uh hopefully the chat y'all have a fantastic rest of your day yeah, well thank you for, for being a part of the show each and every week brother Su super appreciate that uh and again you bring a tremendous amount of worth to whatever podcast you're on specifically when you're here with us on tuesdays and uh, speaking of uh, podcasts, this this gentleman here does it multiple times a week. Mav, brother, sell the uh, sell your brand of the Speculation Network, or as it's known, the speculators that are a part of the crew each and every week. I mean, again, obviously, a lot of people in the chat, you know, love the choo choo mother, father, sister, brother, which I can't say the cursing, but. I am going to say that I love that about you. You do great work with Pong. You work with a great group of guys, Jasper, and obviously uh, Fuzzy, and Game Pass Dad, who's in the chat. Shout out to him. He's going to be coming back to the Xbox uh, I mean, the Xbox um, Lunch Break special, uh, hopefully soon, sooner than later. Sell your brand, brother. Tell everyone where they can help you, you know, move up to that 5K, which you're hunting for as we speak, Mav. And more importantly, where could people... I'll reach out to you on social media yeah man i appreciate the invite today boom as uh great conversations if you guys want to find what we got going on just go over on youtube search up fun speculation uh we have three shows right now because fun pop is on hiatus uh since jasper is is away but he'll be coming back eventually and we'll we'll bring that show back but uh we got mondays is fun speculation podcast at 10 p.m eastern time we got PM and the PM Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Friday's Xbox Ultimate Podcast at 10 p.m. Eastern Time as well. And we have a blast over there. Uh, and if you come hang out in the chat, you'll have a blast too. Um, unless you're somebody that's toxic controlling, then sometimes you get the boot because you're not wanted. And I see somebody in the chat who's upset about hey, that. Hey, Caitlin is here. Okay. Hey, Caitlin, welcome to the <laughs> show. Thanks. I'm glad that she's uh, she's uh, stopped by. Yeah. Hey, babe. What's up, baby? Um, yeah, uh, dude, it's always a great time to be here, man. And uh, it's like kind of coming home when I come and able to come he be here on Xbox Factor Podcast and with Steel Rain. Absolute one of the best dudes out there, my bro. Great show. Uh, is uh, Joby and uh, one of the trolls that you're talking about, sir? Because if mm. he is, he's going to get the ban with the quickness. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Well, goodbye, Joby. Have a nice life. <laughs> There you go. So you're out. Uh, uh, I saw him already starting to poke fun, and I've never seen that name before. And listen, people come here to have fun. Nobody wants to fight with anybody. I certainly don't want people fighting with each other. And I certainly don't want people coming here to troll or be bullies because then you get the block. And that's exactly what just happened. Uh, so, ah, you know, such is life. Thank you, Caitlin, for uh, jumping in and telling him to uh, cool his jets. And now I realize that he is a troll and he is no more. He's been smited as you've seen me do to many bad guys in Dragon's Dogma 2. Well, I did it in real life. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for hanging out with us for nearly two hours. A big thank you to all of the Super Chats that came in today. A big thank you to all of the channel members that continue to support us through channel membership. And of course, I'm going to close out the show with something that's incredibly important to me, folks. Hopefully one day it will be important to you. And that's something that my dad taught us when we were kids. And he would say, Craig, treat others. 
how you want to be treated. And also, it doesn't cost anything to be nice. You live by those rules, son. I can guarantee you, you're going to have an awesome day. So take care, everyone. And we'll see you next week on the newest episode of the Xbox Factor Podcast.